Are you an enterprise dissatisfied with overpriced analytics software that can't keep up with modern data? If so, then GraphWell is the solution for you. GraphWell is an unstructured data analytics platform for enterprises who demand total data visibility across their network. GraphWell lets your security team go beyond the SIM and fuse data sources to correlate and answer questions you didn't know needed to be asked. Go to gravwell.io forward slash security weekly for an unlimited data trial and gain uncompromising visibility today. Elastic Security empowers security teams everywhere to prevent, detect, and respond to threats quickly through a unified solution. And it's free and open, putting you in control. Use Elastic Security to eliminate blind spots by analyzing all of your data, no matter its volume, format, or age. Stop threats at scale with automated threat and anomaly detection. And arm every analyst with fast search and integrated case management. Download or try Elastic Sim for free and experience the benefits of an open security solution backed by world-class security research at securityweekly.com forward slash elastic. Welcome, everyone. I am Paul Sidorian, the co-founder and CTO here at Security Weekly. Very excited to announce some of my uh, co-hosts for this recording. Uh, Mayhol Ravankar is a cybersecurity professional with over 15 years of experience in vulnerability management, policy compliance, and security operations. He leads the product management and engineering functions for VMDR at Qualys. Mayhol, welcome. Hey, thank you for having me on the show. Mayhal's certainly a familiar face as we've worked together in vulnerability management uh, for quite some time. No stranger uh, to this topic. Uh, as Chief Product Officer at Qualys, Sumed Takar oversees worldwide engineering development and product management for the Qualys software as a service platform, an integrated suite of security and compliance applications. Sumed, welcome. Thank you, Paul. Always a pleasure to talk to you. I am. Uh, I'm so excited to talk to both of you. The collective experience on uh, vulnerability management uh, and other topics that relate in information security uh, just it makes me so excited uh, to talk about all of this today. And I think where I want to start, uh, and I know there's some kind of announcements that we want to get into, um, but Sumed, you were telling me earlier about um, you know link, linking all of these products together, where we started out with just straight network scanning, and we've started to add on a lot of these features, and some of the newer ones are really exciting because they're new and, and represent, I think, a great pathway to link together all these activities. So, Sumed, if you want to kind of kick us off and start with that kind of chain of all of these different activities. Yeah, I know. I, I have been at Qualys for 18 years, and I, I remember that we consider a customer to be very forward-thinking if uh, they were scanning once a month. All right. right. <laughs> those true. were the days when uh, vulnerability management was, uh, you know, was considered something okay you have to do. And uh, and over the years, as we evolved and we evolved the platform, we we brought the platform to the point where it's uh, highly scalable. We're helping large organizations scale to having a continuous visibility of their entire um, infrastructure. Uh, and then extending, you know, as infrastructure has changed, you know, it used to be a bunch of servers and now you have cloud and containers and all of that. So the platform has scaled. And one of the things that we did as we scaled is we added more and more capabilities that help customers reduce uh, uh, other products that they had to deploy, uh, multiple agents and multiple consoles, and then pulling all that data into, into Splunk and other uh, type of, uh, of uh, systems. And as we went through that journey uh, and, and we created these capabilities, we, we started to realize pretty quickly based on customer feedback that at the end of the day, the customers aspire to become secure and not necessarily to install and deploy multiple modules and solutions and all of that. And, and they want to go from detection to response as fast as they can, right? Mm -hmm. I want to be able to, and in as much of an automated way. So the fast and the automated sort of go hand in hand with each other. And so uh, in as we couple years ago, we were talking about we have 18 different modules and 20 different modules. What we started to do is to really bring all of those together more into a workflow. The workflow was more beneficial to the customers. The ability to go from discovering the devices, uh, doing their inventory, doing their assessment, uh, prioritizing them automatically based on intelligence, and then actually uh, fixing the issues all in a single workflow was really the thing that everybody wanted because they didn't want to have multiple tools and solutions and all of that. And that's really where we were quite excited to announce VMDR early this year, uh, where we, we, we really provide 
customers fewer and fewer steps that they have to do so that they can really uh, do this automation in their VM in their vulnerability management cycle uh, in a, in a single uh, application. Mm. Um, and Mayhal, I know uh, you've recently joined uh, Qualys, um, but talk about some of the things that got you excited about VMDR and, and how it ties into uh, some of the things Sumed was saying about all the different aspects of vulnerability scanning. I mean, you know, one of my hypotheses has been that to do security really well, uh, you need a really good agent, right? And, uh, uh, and one of the unique advantages uh, Collis had is that we have a very lightweight agent. Uh, it's about three megabytes in size, and it is supported on all major uh, operating systems, Windows, Linux, and so on, right? And that uh, that agent becomes the foundation of all the things that do here at uh, at Collis. Like in the Subed mentioned, uh, we have a global asset inventory. Uh, you know, the agent access an asset inventory agent, which we give out give away for free. But then it allows us to do a lot more things with that agent. You know, we can do vulnerability management, config management, patch management, remediation. Um, you know, uh, in in few weeks, we're going to announce our EDR solution, malware protection, so on. So, you know, yeah, large, uh, majority of kind of stuff, the agent becomes foundational to everything that we do, right? And obviously, you know, Collis research team is one of the best research teams uh, uh, in, the, in the industry. So the research team and the, the amount of uh, work um, you know, the team does, and the scale at which we operate, right? I mean, um, you know, we uh, cater to over uh, 70 of the Fortune 100s. And I was on a call with one of our TAMs yesterday, and in, in she mentioned in passing, you know, I have a customer with 558K uh, uh, assets. And I asked her, did you mean 558 or 558K? <laughs> She's at 558k. So you know we are looking looking at millions of assets for one customer, and this you know goes across a large uh, you know base of our customer base, which is an exciting and challenging problem to solve. And uh, you know so being part of a call this was a no brainer when I looked at the opportunity. Yeah, I, I think it's really awesome that um, you know you've built this capability in a VMDR and are continuing to uh, extend it. So when I think of uh, closing down a vulnerability. Um, while there could be a patch, it's also changing the configuration, right? And that that's a feature, right? I don't necessarily have to have a patch to fix it. I can just say that this new configuration is the fix for this, correct? Yeah, I mean, you can you know you can do these kind of things within the platform as well. Right? Not only fix the you know patch the vulnerability with the Collis patch management solution, but also if you want to make a configuration change or work around you know deploy a workaround to resolve the resolve the issue, you can do that uh, as well with uh, uh, with Collis. So you know it it becomes a it truly becomes a platform which can solve a lot of things for you. Right, so you don't have to buy uh, a lot of multiple point solutions to do one off things like for example if you care about file integrity monitoring that's baked into the uh, that's baked into the agent as well if you care about malware protection that is baked into the solution vulnerability management remediation and so on mm -hmm. so there's a lot of innovation happening uh, at Collis, and you know um, um, you know the agent uh, is a is a core uh, piece of that yeah sumed uh, mehul touched on two new features that i think we want to dive into a little more uh, that being malware uh, and edr as well yeah, I think before we hit that, one of the things that I wanted to expand on what uh, what Mehul uh, talked about is, and, and which you brought up, is that uh, configuration assessment is is really sort of uh, uh, ignored, uh, you know, in a way that that is people don't really take into that that into consideration, which is really odd because you could have a machine that you're perfectly patched for software, but it's significantly more exploitable because of the configuration issue mm. than the software patch issue. And, and so what we've really uh, worked on doing with VMDR is to, to bring that aspect, not just from a, a response perspective, but also from the, the prioritization perspective, right? Uh, you could have a vulnerability that is super exploitable uh, and that's on a machine, no doubt. Every, all scanners will, will discover that. Uh, they will also tell you that this is very exploitable, so you are at a very high risk. But you may have a uh, net, uh, NLA enabled on that machine. You may have uh, another configuration that actually blocks the potential of that particular thing being exploited, which now significantly reduces the risk. So that is a big element of what goes into VMDR, is that ability to look on an asset basis, not just a generic thing that says this vulnerability is very exploitable, which means that you have a problem. 
that's not necessarily true because you can look at other aspects of the machine that that maybe mitigate that so we take that into consideration there and then of course when you go to do the the deploy the patches etc uh, uh, today we support patch deployment and you know with Mehul coming on board we are adding a lot more capabilities around being able to take many other response actions which includes uh, fixing configurations it may include uh, you know doing some changing some settings and we upgrading some specific things on the machine or talking to some downstream uh, solutions that can block certain ports etc but that's sort of what we're looking at from just you know um, why VMDR is different than other prioritization solutions in the market, which really focus only on the vulnerability aspect of it. Yeah, um, I really and- like that because I, you know, spent a whole bunch of time the other day. I built a container. It's on the latest version of Linux, latest version, you know, of the software, and I got it deployed and we tested it. I'm like, that's great. I'm like, but. Now that service doesn't have any authentication, and that's a finding, right? <laughs> that's right. solely configuration based. Has nothing to do. Like I built it with all the latest and greatest modules and everything, but it's missing authentication, right? So now the exploitation of that is very different. It's not a remote code execution, but that is an exploitable service in a condition that a platform like Qualys can can find that and alert me right. of it and allow me to fix that easily. Uh, absolutely, and. And you know that that kind of flows into this conversation that we were having earlier. Is that we just recently announced our EDR solution, right? Mm-hmm. And we we call it multi-vector EDR. And the reason for that is uh, because EDR traditionally only focuses on the endpoint telemetry to say, oh, I see this process, I see this connection, I want to take some action. But you need the bigger context, right? You need to be able to say, well, what is there a vulnerability that caused? Uh, or was exploited like in, in the example that you gave you may have the latest package that is installed but how did the compromise happen well that happened because authentication was not enabled mm. right so so you bring a lot more context so we are quite excited because i mean the way i look at that is the vmdr and edr are two sides of the same coin right like you have vmdr which is really about prevention you're basically trying to do everything you can to patch to fix configurations to, to have proper hygiene and all of that. And, and the goal there is to minimize, add a cost to the adversary to minimize the potential of being compromised. And then of course, still things are going to happen. And that's kind of the other side of the EDR, which is let's now monitor the device to see if there's things that are happening. And then can we go back to say, uh, hey, this thing happened, but you know, was it because my Firefox was unpatched? Is it because, uh, and where else do I have exposure, mm-hmm. right? One of the things that we, uh, we we talked a lot about uh, last week was a lot of time ED, the R in the response of an EDR solution is really kill the process or right. quarantine file, which nobody will ever take that machine back into production anyway because you kill the process or you quarantine the file once it has malware. You're going to really have to reimage that machine. So the response that is more critical needs to be where else do I see these hashes? Where else? Do I have vulnerabilities that were used or configurations that were used to to compromise? Where else did I see lateral movement across my network? How can I protect those by quickly pivoting, finding all of those, and installing a patch or or deploying a configuration? Right, that's the part that uh, we 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 bring together in the in a bigger platform rather than the silos of of vulnerability management and EDR. I I learned this very early on in my career, and I wish I had the tools that we have available today, such as call us to do that, right? In the early 2000s, when we had worms running around, I was was the one like, hold on, time out. We can go play whack-a-mole, but yeah. until we figure out like what this malware is exploiting, I'm like, we're right. going to be fighting a losing battle. So we got to do the instant response on one sin. This was all manual, right? Figure out what that is. Start pushing the fix out while then we go play mac- whack-a-mole, and that's how we get it, <clears throat> get ahead. Yeah. Right? Absolutely. And then that's how I, I mean, at the end, I, I feel like customers... They they're not necessarily looking to have a, a, you know feeling any safer because you have ten or fifteen or thirty different solutions. They want something that's quick, easy uh, in terms of context and and bringing that context and then being able to take actions uh, quickly. And that that's really what we are focusing. Why we have this sort of VMDR and EDR releases coming out right after each other is really around bringing that uh, capability so that customers can quickly focus on 
uh, what they really need to focus on uh, for having that issue not happen again, rather than just saying, okay, let me take action on that one endpoint. Right. And I mean, we can start going through logs, but I think that's why EDR exists is because generating and correlating logs by hand without the help of something is, is really difficult, correct? Right. And I, I kind of always feel like uh, EDR came from a failed attempt at making the sim do what your EDR solution is wants to do, right? Mm, Which is yeah. what, get logs and then correlate with threat and, and maybe do some uh, threat intelligence and maybe do some additional analysis on that. And the, the existing solutions from a sim perspective have been very, very uh, slow and take forever to get the logs and correlate. And so EDR sort of came with the promise that we're going to do the same thing, which is collect telemetry and then we're going to do the same thing which is uh, take third intelligence and then f uh, highlight things that are happening uh, but uh, we will do it faster quicker and focus on the endpoint the challenge is that the endpoint is only one form of infrastructure in your entire environment you still have your cloud and container mm -hmm. and so that's kind of where the whole xdr and and why we are we're focusing on going beyond endpoints and providing a much more holistic platform that does detection and response across many different elements as well. Mm. And Mehal, you mentioned uh, malware as well. Uh, and that's a component in this uh, in this picture above and beyond being able to collect the telemetry, but actually identifying malware as part of this process as well. Sorry, Sumit. Or, or yeah, I think, and I think Sumit can speak to this better than I can. Uh, we do have the IOC and the EDR solutions, which are looking at the processes that are running, you know, looking for any files that you might find on the system and then alert them and then allow, to, allow you to proactively take action to, you know, do the kind of things uh, Sumit was talking about, you know, like, you know, you know, kill the process according to the system um, and in future we want what we want to do is integrate with other uh, vendors in the space so basically you know go out to the routers and the switches of the world and enable the firewall config and so on right mm. so but we are starting off with uh, with our first solution in the first uh, in, in the next few weeks and then you'll see much more richer refined uh, product in the sums in terms of workflows integrations going forward and uh, Sumed, I, I also want to point out that, uh, you know, we cover a lot of acquisitions in this space, but the te a lot of the technology we're talking about, you've developed in-house. What, what went into the decision to, uh, you know, you're always faced with that, right? Do we uh, integrate or partner? Do we build it ourselves or do we go acquire someone, right? Yeah. Now, now you're bringing back some nightmares for me uh, for <laughs> the last few years. <laughs> But, you know, it's been interesting because uh, if you if you recall the history of Qualys, right, and, and it's, it's really funny to see some of our competitors go through that cycle. But mm. when we started, we were, you know, I thought we were crazy to say that, hey, we're going to we're going to build a platform that we host in our data center that's going to provide you security uh, and, and host the data. And, and it was going to be much better and faster and scalable and quicker than anything that was on prem. And, uh, and, you know, people thought we were crazy and, and we managed to really show that uh, leveraging cloud-based architecture is the right approach today for scalable security. And so now it's become a fashion statement, right? Everybody mm. wants to say we are right. native, cloud-native, cloud-based platform, et cetera. And then we have, uh, we have other uh, companies that went through from, you know, saying cloud is bad, cloud is bad to saying, hey, we are the, we are the first cloud-based solution to come up with things. But the, the challenge that I always faced in the early days was that, if we were looking to acquire some technology, those platforms are always on-prem and never designed to scale to a cloud-based solution. You know, uh, as Mehul talked about, okay, we have a customer that has, uh, you know, 500,000 devices, right? Not 50,000, you know, they mm. 500,000 devices they want to do these things on. And we have a, a customer that is a highly ephemeral environment where they spin up 4 million agents every week, uh, net new agents because they have so much churn, right? So we couldn't really go out and acquire companies in a meaningful way that we could integrate their technology. So uh, in the last, I would say, couple of years, as newer startups have come up who are now starting off with new technology and cloud-based approach, that makes it a bit easier for us to integrate these solutions into our platform. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, otherwise, we've sort of stayed away from that because, you know, in general, the way we uh, do things is different uh, from an architectural perspective and it just becomes too much work to do that right just as an example right 
why like we have an agent which is as as mehul really talked about earlier he really likes the agent and because the agent is extremely lightweight right it's 3 megabyte agent and it does seven uh, eight different things including patch deployment and the reason is because while everybody talks about you know, we have the smartest agent in the market we are saying the opposite we're saying we have the dumbest agent in the market right i mean and and i don't mean to say that is a dumb agent but it's that it's meant to be a architecture where the agent does absolute minimal data collection and all the work is done on the platform side so on the platform side is where we do all of that correlation and providing that uh, additional information uh, and we do that on the platform side which is completely different than what other companies are doing and so then it becomes challenging for us to acquire companies that are saying my agent is uh, right. the best because it and it's big fat it does machine learning all of that uh, and so that's that's really the the thing that goes into the decision making whether we 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 acquire or we build it ourselves and of course having 6 years ago having gone and set up a, a major operation out in india has helped us get the talent that we require to augment our us talent and provide us a much better way to be able to produce much faster and so that's why we've seen in the last 4 years or so as a, a uh, you know highly accelerated roadmap coming out of qualis compared to most other organizations that are still focused on only vulnerability management mm. um sumed you mentioned containers uh a few times can you talk about how i would integrate the qualis platform and features into my containers and microservices yeah see containers are uh, very interesting and they they actually provide a lot of opportunities to do security better right and and the whole notion of this container is this ephemeral nature that you you can get a image and you can spin up the image into multiple containers and then you can spin them down as needed etc and and so that gives an opportunity from a security perspective to so you kind of have these two places where security needs to be looked at one is in the cicd pipeline where you're basically saying i have my cicd pipeline i'm building these images on a daily basis right we 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 talk about how vulnerability management has changed from one some month scan to daily but look at what has changed in the development world right we've gone from one release every 6 months was considered a fantastically agile team to we have time box and we are releasing things a daily and a lot of the people who are doing microservices will tell you they build things on a daily basis so you kind of have this infrastructure that is being built on a daily basis and then you being deployed and being monitored and brought down so the fundamentals don't change right you st- anything you have in production whether it's a, whether it's a, a full vm or a physical server or a container you still want to monitor it for activity and and be able to do some policies and block it etc but one of the things that containers bring about is the ability to inject security into the ci cd pipeline so from a qualis perspective and it's not necessarily specific to qualis but from any container security perspective you want to make sure that you do everything to eliminate those misconfigurations and vulnerabilities early on in the ci cd pipeline and with that automation that devops brings you can now have the qualis platform being injected as part of your jenkins plugin or whatever else you have to say new images being built immediately will get scanned and if there are any issues it there will be flagged absolutely immediately and the build will fail so you don't have to deal with these silos where somebody built it and throw over the fence to the operations team who has no idea what it is they run it only to find out later that it has all these vulnerabilities so so that's one aspect of containers is is vulnerabilities and being able to fix those in, in the in the um, ci cd pipeline but then once they go out to production you know developers are very good at uh, creating lean images and then installing uh, new software hmm. uh, from s3 bucket on the running container causing it to have additional vulnerabilities that you didn't have before hmm. so we also provide a way to monitor the containers at run time so that you can make sure that they don't drift from their original image and then if you can also take policy based approach to say you know this is my database uh, container that is running my my database transaction whatever it is it should never have the ability to execute a system command right you can actually block that at run time mm-hmm. so we we provide a solution that basically takes care of the end to end because patching is different in containers people don't patch the the the, the device at run time right so you you got to have that patching more built into the cicd pipeline and then you monitor it at runtime mm. 
Fantastic. And then when we talk about moving into the cloud, it means so many different things to so many different people, but we still have to do the fundamentals of vulnerability management and patching and configuration management. Um, how has Qualys you know, grown the product line to help clients who are at all different stages, I'm sure, of pushing into the cloud and, and cloud maturity and cloud security maturity? Yeah, it's a, it's a new, uh, again, a new approach, new paradigm. It's uh, prone to uh, having more automation built in. And so it makes it a little bit easier in many ways. But you're right. I mean, at the end of the day, you see all the cloud compromises was, were not because of some complex, big, bad thing. It's like, oh, I left my S3 bucket completely open and I didn't look at my configurations or I was running a completely vulnerable, unpatched uh, virtual machine in my AWS account. And, and the coin miners got hold of it. And mm -hmm. my first uh, indication that something is wrong is because finance called me saying my bill is tripled, mm -hmm. <laughs> right? Because you have been compromised. Uh, and, and I think it again goes back to that same fundamental of saying, how can you have a solution that is with you through your CI/CD pipeline all the way to your runtime? So having the ability to, again, make sure that you can scan your images during your um, AMI generation and AMI creation, having a solid uh, continuous delivery capability that makes sure that um, devices or images that have not been approved are not spun up in those accounts. And then having that additional perspective of monitoring to say, is my cloud account configured correctly? Do the right people have the right access, right? Do I have the right uh, firewalls in place? Do I have uh, instances that are only created from approved AMIs? And then on top of that, a, a virtual machine is a virtual machine wherever you run it. So it needs to have its own vulnerability assessment, uh, inventory configuration assessment, end of life assessment. And so what we do at Qualys is we, we bring these three elements together, having the CICD pipeline integration for our AMIs so that you can make sure that those AMIs don't pass. Then having the integration that is, that is done at the um, runtime uh, also so that you can have an image that you can have an agent that is part of the AMI so that anything that's spun up in the cloud you can find out exactly what is on it and then the third aspect is looking at your cloud account uh, but with what we call as cloud view which is looking at it from the outside to see are you missing any configurations on the infrastructure itself so that those can be brought together right and that this is kind of goes into the bigger platform of saying we're not just endpoint and not just vulnerability management but we 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 take that from all the way from the endpoints, the servers, um, container, and the cloud to kind of give you a much more broader and holistic uh, perspective. One of the greatest challenges that has always been present in any vulnerability and patch management program for an enterprise or even smaller business is the prioritization. Um, so Mayhol and or Sumed, can you speak to what is in the platform and maybe just recently built into the platform that can help organizations prioritize, like, what, what should I patch first? Because we all don't have armies of, you know, hundreds of thousands of people to go buy patches, right? So, so yeah, that's a, the, that's a really great question because, uh, you know, one of the things that uh, we, we see is that, to, like, everybody just looks at the vulnerability and, and they don't look at the context of the asset and the context of the, the configuration of that particular asset to see if the vulnerability is actually applicable in your environment on your asset, right? So even these uh, other solutions in the market that say, oh, you only have to fix 3% of your vulnerabilities based on our uh, machine learning and all of that give you a false sense of, of uh, what you need to really focus on. So one thing we did, uh, and there is no, there's no magic uh, that, that you can do machine learning or something like that. You really need to have many different ways to correlate the, the asset and the, the findings of the asset with the vulnerability and the applicability of that vulnerability, right? Which is what we call as the attack surface options. And, and I'm going to have Mehul be the, the expert here to talk up more about that. But what, what we really focus from a prioritization perspective is not just to say, oh, this is a vulnerability that's vulnerable means, you know, that, that of course, it's a higher uh, priority to, to look at, but that doesn't necessarily mean that you actually have to go and fix every instance of it immediately because you may have other things. And so we can help you focus on aspects of remediation that are truly more critical right now. Mm. So, so people can talk a little bit more about the, the, the yeah. attack surface options that we have. 
Yeah, I mean, you know, the thing I wanted to say is, you know, Collis operates at such a massive scale. Um, uh, you know, oftentimes our customers, the problem our customers are trying to solve is always a needle in the haystack uh, a problem, right? So one of the things uh, Collis has done in terms of helping, you know, and the prioritization comes later on, is to build a massive Elasticsearch, uh, you know, backend. And what that allows us to do is that it allows us to search through hundreds of uh, attributes and filters in the in the platform itself, right? Um, so that you know, from from there on, you can start to build your reports, your dashboards. These are all shareable. You can trend them and so on. And the other thing we do here is then we augment or enrich this information with you know real time threat indicators, which we call RTIs, right? So so we subscribe to a lot of uh, threat feeds in the product, so that we it's uh, all the vulnerabilities that come back, we enrich them with the RTI information. And and, and Sumed mentioned around the the context of the asset. So we also look at the asset and we see is this asset exposed to the internet, right? So if it is exposed to the internet, we need to prioritize this asset's priority, uh, remediation ahead of uh, something else, right? So we bring in the asset context as well when we look at uh, when we look at the when we look at the prioritization problem. So you know, the, you know, we start with we start with a very massive and scalable uh, elastic uh, elastic search backend. We you know we uh, we provide our customers with all the filters and the dashboard capabilities that they want, so that they can you know as soon as they log in. In our intent, our goal is to then provide them with the list of information they need to act upon quickly. Right? We don't want them to go in and then search for the same set of things over and over again. So once you're able to search and filter on these things, you can create your dashboards, you can share it with your other teams. As soon as you log in, Collis will provide you with a list of prioritized items that you need to take uh, action upon. And then Collis, by, by the time it has shown up on your dashboard, Collis has already done the hard work. Of, of you know indexing the data, prioritizing the data, enriching the data with thread feeds from not just the Collis uh, research team, but mm -hmm. like all the other subscription feeds from you know maybe Reversing Labs or um, some of the other feeds that we uh, subscribe to. So when a customer logs in, you know you know typically you know you know, and this is a big debate in our in our organization around the scoring and whatnot. But you know our goal is to you know not worry about you know uh, all these other external factors. We want to present their customers with a prioritized view of things that they need to take care of right away. And this is the burning problem in your organization. Take your action right now. And then we tie that all into our patch management solution as well. So we don't, we don't only help you uh, uh, prioritize the vulnerabilities and assets, but then we also allow you, you know, we also provide you with a you know, one-click solution to actually go in and deploy the patches so that you know, those systems are patched, they're fixed, the configurations are resolved, and your risk from those is instantly mitigated, right? Which is something that is unique. Uh, I mean, this is something that is unique to uh, call us, and it didn't happen over time. It took over almost 20 years to get here, but this is the, this is where the, uh, the VMDR solution truly shines. You know, we can scan, we can prioritize, we can patch, and then, you know, in future, we'll continue to uh, iterate from here on where we can integrate with other solutions so that, you know, other solutions can work with our solution as well. Yeah, it begs those classic questions when, for example, Microsoft, uh, I believe it was last week, came out with a, a disclosure of CVSS 10.0, right? DNS servers are absolutely, you know, they're vulnerable, Critical. right? But and like your first question is not like, oh, like how do I go apply the patch? Your first question is, where are my Windows DNS servers? Do I have them? And are the ones that are exposed to the internet are there some of those as well as ones not exposed to the internet, right? It kind of hits on all the stuff you just said, Mayhall. That's a yep. great, great example, right? And this is exactly, I mean, I, I kid you not, this is exactly what happened on one of my customer calls yesterday. We were on a call, we were walking through all the things that I just talked about. And, you know, he asked, hey, can I find all my DNS servers that are not having, that are not patched or yep. any of my DNS servers, they don't have an agent installed. And they could literally figure that out in two seconds on the call right there. Yeah, that's awesome. And, you know, because it was all part of the, all the data was part of the platform and they didn't have to do any other uh, you know, jumping through the hoops to get to that uh, information. So that's where I think the college platform really shines. Um, and we, we we intend to refine it from here on. And that's a great, uh, I would say if I had to add to that, I think that's a great example that you brought up, Paul, about the internet facing, right? Mm -hmm. Because yes, I can, you know, you, if I prioritize my vulnerability only based on the CVSS score, 
I, I will have a dev machine that's also popping up as a mm-hmm. super high criticality. Uh, but then the first thing you want to know when is any of these things exposed on the internet or are they in an environment where where I have a, sli- a much higher risk? And, and that's exactly what we do. And, uh, you know, and, and you know, to to add to uh, Mehul's point, and I am the dissenting voice here at Qualys on, on many of these things because I get to do that. Mm-hmm. But uh, when we talk about scoring and prioritization and all of that, I was telling you, know, like, I think at the end of the day, like for me as a customer, because of course I run the security for Qualys as well, uh, what my my thing is, I just want to know. Tell me what is what I really need to fix. Okay, like I log in today. What what yeah. do I need to do today? I mean, do I care? You gave it a score of two or seven. Like what two? Then it's like Jira tickets, right? Like if they're marked below P three, you never really even touch them. So it's mm-hmm. like, why are we even marking them? Like, are we do we need to do it or do we not need to do it? Right? And 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 that's like the the aspect of prioritization and and risk and all of that that. Uh, we, we've been all struggling with, but, but we're trying to bring more context to help answer those questions. Yeah, and in along the lines of context, um, what if I've got all the remediations in place, and what if I've implemented a workaround? And actually, the recent uh, Windows DNS flaw had some of those uh, recommendations from Microsoft on well, if you filter these type of requests, then yes, your server is still vulnerable, but you can mitigate in the meantime. Is that there a way for me to uh, kind of let the Qualys platform learn or know about those different um, remediations? Yeah, and you know, and this is something you know we we extensively talked about as part of a response to the Sigrid uh, vulnerability. You know, so you know we not only for help customers find these vulnerabilities, patch them, but you know we realize not all customers will be able to patch them right away, right? So we also recommend uh, workarounds that you can apply, and you know this is where our policy compliance solution comes in, configuration um, uh, management solution mm-hmm. comes in, where you can in it if you don't want if you if you don't want to if you cannot apply the patch, then you know more, maybe you just go ahead and apply these workarounds till to the, till you get to the point where you get to your patch cycle, right? Where you can actually deploy these patches, and all of this is actually possible with the Qualys platform, which is extremely uh, exciting. That's outstanding. Um, I know we don't have too much time left, but I did want to just talk a little bit about the web application scanning and how that ties into. Uh, various things that we talked about in terms of remediation, configuration, auditing. How is that tied into some of these newer features? Yeah, I mean, you know, the, it all ties together, right? Like we, <laughs> we which is what we talked about. Like I, I always take this example of you have a web application that's running on your as microservices, which are running as containers, which those containers are running on a Docker host, which is running in AWS. And we have all these siloed solution looking at my, oh, my AWS configuration, that's a different solution. My mm. uh, my host in AWS, that's a different solution. And then the containers, yeah, that's a different solution that looks at the containers. And then nobody talks about the application level, right, which is your API, your web application. And and so obviously today with, with our scanning appliances, we do that. Uh, we, we do that assessment both in the CICD pipeline, but also at runtime to monitor to see if your assets have vulnerabilities, et cetera. But we're, we're working on extending this concept of VMDR to web application detection response as well, right? Because we also already today have the ability to do virtual patching based on a, a web application firewall, right? Mm-hmm. So today Qualys does provide a web application firewall. So when two things need to happen, right? We we are working on integrating that even uh, in a much better way like we have done with VMDR, the ability to say, here's, I found these things and I can quickly create a patch so that I protect myself in the short term while my development team is getting the rest of it fixed, et cetera. Uh, eliminate at the front of the line, you know, your, your supply chain uh, issues, which is everything that goes into the build, you know, look at your uh, Java libraries, this, that, eliminate, make sure that they are not vulnerable, but then also tie the infrastructure to the application, right? That, that application that has these issues is running on these containers that have uh, configuration issues, or that application is talking to this database, and that database has these multiple issues that need to be, and, and together, the vulnerability on the application combined with the vulnerability on that database that it's talking to together give you the better profile of your risk, right? You may have a, an application that has some vulnerability, but it's much protected if it if the database you know is able to detect and block any SQL injection type of attacks, etc. 
So, so today we have these capabilities in the platform, but we are working on tying those together so you can have a better correlated uh, vi you know, visualization of your application and infrastructure securities together. You know, it's, it's amazing. I did uh, uh, some research and a, a demonstration on some web applications that were vulnerable. And I looked just at the CVSS score and I tried to pick ones that weren't super high, right? And I took that vulnerability and I built in other vulnerabilities in the chain like you were talking about, Sumit, right? I made the container really vulnerable. I made it running as root and I gave it some extra pr privileges. Maybe it wasn't running as root, but I gave it extra, you know, privileges through capabilities. And right. I was able to go from, you know, CVSS score 6.0 to like full, complete compromise of the entire, all of the containers in just like a series of, of exploits. And yeah. what I hear you saying is that that wouldn't be a 6.0 out of 10 in the Qualys system. That could very well be a 10 out of 10 because you're learning about the chain of right. those vulnerabilities. Exactly, exactly. And that's, that, that's exactly where we're moving the platform towards because now you have all the context together in one place and you're not trying to stitch multiple solutions together. That's outstanding. Outstanding. Anything else um, that Mehal or Sumed you wanted to cover uh, today for our audience? So, you know, one thing I wanted to cover is where do we go from here? I, you, know, we, you know, Sumed and his team have built a massive platform, a scalable platform, and now we want to continue to scale this platform with more integrations, more, uh, uh, you know, integrations with uh, thread fit so that, you know, the data that we have, we can enrich the data. And we also take the view that, you know, we are a platform that, you know, you can use for all the things that you want to do, but we also recognize that uh, there are other solutions that you, uh, you, you may want our solution to work with, right? You know, maybe it is an automation platform, maybe it is a SIM or whatever it is, you know. So we want to allow customers to use our solutions where they see it uh, as the best solution to do their job. And if they already have a solution in place, which uh, does the job they want it to do pro perfectly well, we want a call us to integrate with it so that the workflow is seamless. You know, customers hire us to, uh, to complete a job and we want to complete the job of vulnerability management from assessment to uh, prioritization to remediation. Uh, and so on. So this could be with the college platform integrating with other partners and so on. So this is something that you would see coming out of us in the in the in the future. Um, you know, and you know, continue to enrich the platform from here on. Mayhol uh, and Sumed, uh, we're unfortunately short on time. So, uh, but this has been an awesome discussion, and uh, I want to thank you both very much uh, for this opportunity. Uh, I I learned a ton from this discussion uh, as well. Certainly, on things in there, I'm like, I didn't know you guys had had that as well. Uh, so, great job! Uh, thank you very much. Thank you. All right, Paul. Always a pleasure talking to you. Thank you. Have a good day. Same here. Bye. You too.